Here at Team Triple Jump, we just love to bring you hot and fresh science facts every fortnight as part of our Worst Games Ever series. But what you probably don't know is we also like hot and fresh science facts that pertain to good games. If you've ever witnessed something in one of your favourite titles and thought to yourself, hmm, I'm not sure that could happen in real life, then odds are you're right. Sometimes these things can be explained away by the game's lore, but others are just scientific faux pas on the part of the developers. For this list then, we're taking a look at just 10 of the silliest science gaffes in gaming history. Now, for clarity, we are not trained science people, as they're known in the Oxford English Dictionary, but everything on this list is based on actual science people's research. So if you think we're wrong, I don't know, take it up with them, I guess. Oh, and we will also be talking major plot points for these games you see on screen, so a spoiler warning is very much in effect. I'm the highly scientific Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 bits of video game science that are total nonsense. Number 10. Barrels do not explode when shot. Doom. If you're into shooters of any persuasion, then it's likely you'll have come across the exploding barrel trope. You know, conspicuously placed red containers that, when shot, will violently explode, killing everyone within a 15-foot radius. Yeah, those. But did you know that it was 1993's Doom where the first exploding barrel showed up in a video game? And did you also know that the very idea of a barrel that explodes when shot at is complete bobbins? Well, now you do. Indeed, no matter what a barrel is filled with, be it petrol or nitroglycerine, it's very unlikely to explode when taking a bullet. This is all down to the delicate balance of variables required to cause an explosion. In order to detonate, a barrel would need to have fuel inside to a level that leaves enough oxygen for it to ignite, but not so much that the expansion of the gas when heated won't cause the container to split. You also need an ignition source, i.e. something to start the fire in the first place. So effectively, you'd need to be firing incendiary rounds at a barrel that is filled just right with something that will burn. And that is not really going to happen. Number 9. Long Fall Boots Would Not Work Portal 2 The Portal series has introduced gamers to a plethora of fantastical inventions over the years, including the Aperture Science handheld portal device, AI's GLaDOS and Wheatley, and the Long Fall Boots. Now, sadly, we're not quantum physicists or computer scientists, so we can't really tell you whether the portal gun or malevolent artificially intelligent robots are a real possibility. But what we do know is that Chell's long fall boots absolutely would not work. The boots were created to prevent harm from coming to the portal gun by protecting its user from, well, long falls. The issue is that there's absolutely no way that a pair of shoes could provide the deceleration needed to protect their wearer from death in the event that they were to fall or jump from a great height. After all, it isn't the fall that'll kill you, but rather the sudden stop at the end. In order to prevent injury from a fall, you need to decelerate at a controlled rate, which is why stunt performers in movies jump onto great big inflatables or just, you know, tuck and roll. Essentially, there's no way that the long fall boots could slow you down safely enough that you wouldn't still end up splattered on the ground below. Oh, and speaking of jumping from great heights, number five, the leap of faith would kill you, Assassin's Creed. According to the Assassin's Creed series, you can jump off a structure of basically any height, and as long as there's a cart full of hay or some leaves at the bottom, you'll be absolutely fine. I'm here to tell you not to do that, please, because you will definitely die. Alright, fine, death is not actually a dead cert. After all, people have fallen from planes and survived, but your chances of walking away from a leap of faith without a scratch are pretty slim. In case you don't know, the leap of faith is an initiation requirement for the Assassin Brotherhood, and requires the performer to jump from a high platform, do a flip, and then land on a cushioned surface below. The first problem is the fact that it would be be incredibly difficult to hurl yourself from a tall building and land perfectly in a cart-sized spot. Even if you did manage this, though, then the speed at which you'd hit the hay-filled cart would, in all likelihood, prove fatal. 
according to scientists, a fall of over 100 feet is considered deadly, and throughout the Assassin's Creed series, the protagonists frequently leap from structures several times that height. <laughs> Assassin's Creed? More like assassins need to get to a hospital because all of their bones have been shattered. <laughs> oh yeah, g got him. Number 7. That's not how evolution works. Spore. Spore was one of those games that failed to live up to its hype. Developed by Maxis, the same studio behind the Sims series, the game allowed players to play God, giving them a single-celled creature and expecting them to evolve it until it was capable of going to space. The game itself was fine, but it wasn't great like The Sims. Unfortunately, not being as good as its predecessors was the least of Spore's problems though, as it completely bungled the concept of evolution. When players reached the end of each stage, they got the opportunity to use the creature editor, which allowed them to do things like add legs, change the body shape of the creature, or give it new abilities such as flight. Only that's not how evolution works at all. Naturally, it's a complicated concept, but the basic tenets are thus. Every individual within a species is different, apart from identical twins, due at the very least to their unique combination of alleles within their genome and perhaps also due to genetic mutations. These differences can prove integral to allowing the individual to survive long enough to reproduce, meaning their genetic traits are then passed on to their offspring. Take giraffes, for example. They eat leaves from trees, and so those with longer necks could reach slightly higher than other individuals and outcompete them. As a result, those with shorter necks were more likely to die before they got the chance to reproduce, and therefore short necks were evolved out of the gene pool and long necks reigned supreme. What I mean to say, therefore, is that some all-powerful deity didn't just stretch them out one Tuesday afternoon and call it a day. And even if you want to argue that Spore is just showing us the process of speciation, that is, jumping from one species to the next without all the boring minor changes in between, the fact is, the game allows you to completely redesign your creature from one stage to the next if you so choose. That is to say, even if we're making allowances for the fact that the game doesn't depict the gradual changes over time, what it does show is that a small green ground-dwelling creature can suddenly become a purple four-legged winged one as it makes its way from one species to the next. So even if I drop the giraffe-related pedantry, I think it's still fair to say that Spore is not a scientific depiction of evolution. Number 6. Wooden buildings would not have survived Fallout 3. According to several sources, the only things to survive a nuclear holocaust, should it happen, will be grass, cockroaches, and share. However, if you listen to the devs down at Bethesda Game Studios, you can also add wooden buildings to that list. Spoiler alert, no you can't, actually. Those traversing the world of Fallout 3, which is set some 200 years after nuclear apocalypse has devastated the world, will notice that many wooden buildings are still dotted around the landscape. Alas, it's our unfortunate job to tell you that your little log cabin in the woods to which you hope to retire would not survive for two centuries, and especially not after a nuclear war. Now, a wooden building can last for a very long time if it's properly taken care of, but I think we can all agree that the last thing on anyone's mind after the end of the world would be wood preservation. Many wooden buildings would be destroyed by the pressure from the initial blasts, those slightly further out would likely catch fire, and any remaining after that would simply succumb to the elements. There's really not a lot of creosote lying around in these games. Oh, and whilst we're on the subject of nuclear bombs, number 5. Staring at a nuclear detonation would blind you. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare the ending of the shock and awe mission in 2007's Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came as a complete surprise to players. After all, they'd done everything they were supposed to do, they thought they'd save the day, and then BOOM! Nuke out of nowhere. Our horrified player character, Paul Jackson, could only look on in horror as the nuclear bomb detonated, wiping out an entire city. Looking on, however, was a major mistake. 
You see, the detonation of a nuclear bomb causes a flash of light so bright that it will cause onlookers to go blind. Anyone who looks directly at a nuclear blast will experience some level of eye damage, which can range from mild, causing blindness that will wear off within a few minutes, to severe retinal burns. We can't say exactly how badly Jackson and his comrades would have been affected, but those watching the detonation would definitely have lost their vision for at least a while. Not only would Jackson have to deal with the aftermath of the helicopter crash, plus any of the other issues caused by being in close proximity to a nuclear detonation, but he'd also have been forced to do it without the use of his eyes. An all-round bad time. Number 4. Steve would freeze to death. Minecraft. Have you ever wondered how cold it gets in the biomes of Minecraft? Well, based on what we've uncovered while trawling the internet, in the frozen peaks, it's cold enough to kill Steve. You've just got to look at how quickly water freezes in this biome. A single block of water will turn from a liquid to a solid in about two seconds, which is just over two minutes in in-game time, so the air temperature doesn't just need to be freezing, it needs to be significantly colder. We're far too busy to do all of the maths required to work out exactly how cold it would need to be to freeze a block of water solid in two minutes, but thankfully, Austin over at the Game Theorists, no relation, has already done the hard work for us. According to his research, it would need to be, at best, minus 42 degrees Celsius, which is only slightly warmer than the average winter temperature at the South Pole. At those temperatures, and dressed in jeans and a t-shirt, Steve would be suffering from hypothermia within about five minutes, and he'd likely be dead within the hour. So remember, next time you plan on exploring frozen peaks, bring a jacket. Number 3. The gravity gun would launch you across the room. Half-Life 2. We're taking you all the way back to physics class now as we look at the gravity gun from Half-Life 2, or more accurately, the impossibility of the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. According to Sir Isaac Newton, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. For example, when a rocket launches, the burning fuel exerts a downward force, and the reaction propels the craft upwards into the air. What that tells us is that making use of your gravity gun to, say, fire barrels at your enemies, which wouldn't explode, by the way, would cause you to go flying across the room as well. The gravity gun would follow the same principles of physics as any other firearm, i.e., a projectile blasts out of one side, and the gun kicks back. If you've ever fired something like a shotgun or an assault rifle, you'll know just how important it is to hold the thing properly, otherwise you're at risk of kickback, dislocating your shoulder, or worse. Simply put, the force required to propel a barrel hard enough to take out an enemy would cause kickback from the gravity gun strong enough to launch you backwards across the room, leaving you in desperate need of medical attention. Number 2. Shepard would burn up in the atmosphere. Mass Effect 2. When players finished Mass Effect following its release in 2007, they probably couldn't wait for the release of Mass Effect 2 so they could find out what their old pal Shepard was up to. What they probably weren't expecting was for Shepard to suffocate in the vacuum of space within the first 10 minutes of the sequel. Thankfully, the Mass Effect universe is filled to the brim with highly advanced technology, and Cerberus is able to recover Shepard's body from the surface of a nearby planet, and a mere two years later, he's brought back to life. Except, there probably wouldn't be a body to bring back. Assuming the planet in question has an atmosphere, which according to the Mass Effect wiki, it does, then Shepard's body would have burned up on re-entry. If the atmospheric conditions here are anything like Earth, then it's likely that Shepard's carcass would have reached temperatures of around 1,650 degrees Celsius, or 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit if you want to get American about this. For context, a cremation oven runs at around half that. Oh, and for anyone wondering about Shepard's suit, that can't even withstand molten lava, which is generally only around 700 to 1,220 degrees Celsius. I certainly hope you all like your Shepard's Shepard's pie well done, that's all I'm saying. And number one, you can't vaccinate against fungus, The Last of Us. One of the most hotly debated topics in video gaming is Joel's decision to save Ellie at the end of The Last of Us. 
There are some that feel he was right to spare the girl, whilst others believe Joel was wrong to save Ellie, as her sacrifice would have been for the greater good. The greater good. Shut it! What if I told you, though, that Joel was right to do what he did on the basis that the Firefly's science was totally flawed? It's well established that what's causing people to mutate into violent, bloodthirsty creatures in The Last of Us is the Cordyceps fungus. Fun fact, Cordyceps is a real thing that basically turns insects into zombies before killing them. Ew, gross. The thing is, you can't vaccinate against fungus. Scientists are working towards vaccines for fungal illnesses, but as it stands, it's just not possible. Now, you might argue that if the apocalyptic event in The Last of Us takes place in around about present day, then the events of the main game are taking place in the future, where advancements might have been made. But let's face it, a society in which most of the population have been turned into mushroom monsters probably isn't going to be progressing at the rate that things are now. So, in short, Joel was right and shouldn't feel bad about saving Ellie from clueless scientists who wanted to recklessly harvest her brain for absolutely no hope of developing a vaccine.